Boundaries are a property line. Their purpose is to define what we are responsible for and what we are not responsible for. Healthy boundaries allow us to live our lives as God intended, free to make choices and to become all we were created to be. The needs and demands of others can get in the way, and it isn't easy to determine the most loving way to handle this. As we have seen, our lives don't work better when we try harder, act nicer, or take responsibility for others. The functions of a boundary are to keep the good in and the bad out, to act as an alarm system, and to help us protect our freedom. Join Dr. Cloud as he takes you into a deeper understanding of healthy boundaries. Hey guys, welcome to session one of Boundaries. What we're going to be doing in this session is we're going to be talking about kind of an overview of what a boundary is, what it looks like, what it does. And let me start out with um, one of my favorite boundary stories. If you've ever heard me talk about this, you've probably heard me tell this story because I think everyone can identify with somebody in the room that day. Here's what happened. I was at the hospital, a family came by and wanted to see me and I sat down and it was a mom and a dad and two adult kids of theirs in their roughly mid twenties. So the dad says to me, I want you to fix my son. Now, you know, if you're a psychologist, soon it starts out like that, you got a problem, right? But I turned to the young man and I said, so what's your problem? He says to me, <clears throat> well, it's not me. He's talking about my brother. And I said, well, where's your brother? And, he's, and the father pipes in at that point, and he says, well, he didn't want to come today. And I said, well, why didn't he want to come? He said, well, he doesn't think he has any problems. I said, well, perhaps he doesn't. I mean, if he didn't want to, he's, and the father goes, oh, yes, he does. He has a lot of problems. And I said, well, like what? And he said, well, we know that he's got a drug problem. I said, well, that can be serious. What kind of drugs? And he said, he's been smoking dope since he was about 15. I said, how old is he now? He said, he's 23. I go, okay, I did the math. I said, well, he's mellow by now. Well, what else is going on? He said, well, he's flunked out of three colleges. Now, my first thought was, how do you do that? I mean, how do you flunk out of three colleges? I know how to flunk out of one, but how do you get in the second one? So I asked him, how do you do that? And he said, well, he didn't even have the grades to get in the first one. I got him in because I'm on the board of the college, and then he flunked out of that one, and I knew some people. I got him in the second one, and so now I'm starting to understand this, right? I said, okay, so he flunks out of four. And, and then the father goes, and doctor, we've tried everything. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, he flunked out of the first one because all the partying that happens in the dorms. So I put him in the second one. I bought him a nice condo off campus. I didn't want to work to interfere because he had a lot of studying, so I made sure he had plenty of money. Flunks out again. I said, imagine that, kids. Think about it. So he goes on, and then at, at this juncture, you really see a little window into the pain of the dad. I said, any other problems? And he says, well, let me tell you what bothers me the most. He said, when I was his age, I had started three companies. He doesn't even have a college major. I looked at him, and I said, where is he today? The father said, well, he didn't want to come. I said, I know he didn't want to come, but where might I find him? And the father says, well, he's in Vail. I said, Colorado? He said, yeah. I said, what's he doing in Colorado? He said, he's skiing. I thought for a minute, I looked at the dad, and I said, you know what? I'm very sorry. I don't think I can help your son. He said, why not? And I said, well, I'm a psychologist, and I help people with problems. And Frankly, I agree with him. He doesn't have any. Father looks at me, sort of like my German Shepherd does when she doesn't get it, you know. He said, what do you mean doesn't have any problems? I said, sir, the man is in Vail skiing. Does that sound like somebody with problems to you? He's got pretty much everybody, you know, he's got plenty of money. He's got a new house. He's got free time. He's off on a vacation. I can't help him because he doesn't have any problems. I said, on the, you, on the other hand, I can help you because you got a lot of problems. He said, what are you talking about? I got a lot of, I said, you got a flunk out of school problem, a dope problem. He goes, that's not me. That's my son. I said, whoa, your son doesn't have any of those problems. He's in Vail skiing. You are in a psychiatric hospital. You know what kind of people come to psychiatric hospitals? People with problems. Ergo, you must have some problems. He said, but that's not me. I said, you own these problems. You possess these problems. These are your problems, whether you like it or not. He doesn't have any of these problems, but I'm going to help you. 
because I can't help him, remember? I can't help him. Why not? Because he doesn't have any problems. Let me tell you, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you to help him to have some problems. He looked at me like, say that again? I can't help him because he doesn't have any problems. But I can help you because you got lots of problems. But here's how I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you to help him to have some problems. I'm going to teach you a concept called boundaries. Now, as I went on to explain to him a number of things which we'll unpack here, this is kind of the overview of what a boundary is so we can get clear from the beginning. Okay, when you think about a definition of a boundary, basically a boundary is pure and simple a property line, okay? If you think about your property, what do you got? You live here on this lot or in this apartment or in this house and you got the lot and there's a property line around it. And then what happens? You've got a neighbor who lives next door to you, okay? And that's their property. So what is the first thing that the property line, the boundary do? It defines where one person's property begins and ends and the other one begins and ends. So this is where I end and this is where you begin, right? Now, if I drew it a little, a little better, you wouldn't even have a gap in there. It's sort of like, you know, next door to each other. So here's the deal. Boundaries, pure and simple, the definition is a property line. That's what it is. So what do they do? They define ownership, right? Defines ownership. This is me. This is not me. This is me. This is you. This is the dad. This is the son. All right? So if we know ownership of something, if you own something, what do you have? You have control. Okay? You control what goes on on your property. The Bible calls that self-control, Galatians 5. It's a fruit of the Spirit that we were designed to have self-control. But if we have control, what else comes along with that? We are responsible for what goes on on our property, and we're not responsible for what goes on in somebody else's property. All right, now watch this. If this is me and this is you, I am my problem. You are your problem, okay? And as we'll see in a later session, we do have a responsibility to each other, but what we're talking about now is what I'm responsible for. So here's what I had said to the dad. I said, you know what's happening? These lines are all crossed. You don't have any boundaries. See, the son is not taking ownership of his life. He's not taking control of his life. He's out of control with his behavior. And he's not taking responsibility for his life. And the problem is that when you have all of these things going on, there's another thing that happens, and that is that there are consequences to all of this, right? There's consequences. So here's what, and, and that's what boundaries do. They, they, they define where the consequences, where the control, where the responsibility is. So what happens here is now, see the son is out of control in his behavior, and what's happening is, like, think of it in a yard. Let's say he had a tree growing here that he wasn't pruning, and then the limbs started going, reaching over here, and then lightning came, and he hadn't pruned these, and they're sticking over your yard. Lightning comes, and it falls into this yard. What do you do? Well, you call the attorney. And what does the law do? It defines who's responsible for what. And so what the judge would say, you go, dude, that was your tree falling over in this yard. You're the one that should pay for that. Okay, now translated, you're not studying. That should be your problem. You should be paying for that. But what happens was the consequences were all falling in the yard of the dad. Now, this could be a number of scenarios. What if somebody is in a marriage or in a relationship or in a family is using drugs or is abusive or has a rage problem or this, that, and the other? Well, whenever somebody isn't taking responsibility for their lives, there are collateral damages that fall into the hearts, minds, and souls of the people who love them. And so what happens is, 
If the people who love them have no boundaries, they keep ending up with all the pain of this person's problems. And that is not right. Now, here's the deal. That doesn't mean that we don't carry each other's pain. That's a different thing. We'll come to that in a minute. What we're talking about here is not like if somebody over here is hurting and we're going to bear their burden, that's very different. If, if somebody's, you know, they've gone through an illness or they've had bad things happen to them, this, that, and the other, what do we do? We go over to their house and we take care of them. That's bearing one another's burdens. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about in this beginning part of boundaries is when somebody over here is not taking responsibility for their life and the collateral damage is falling in somebody else's yard. Now, what boundaries do is they begin to set a limit of saying, wait a minute, whose problem is this? This is your tree. This is your drug problem. This is your no study problem. I, the dad, I should be in Vail skiing today, and you should be studying or suffering the consequences or earning the money that I'm giving you or whatever it is. You're not, you should be responsible, so I'm not paying for this. Said another way, if somebody's got a drug problem and we have good boundaries, we say to them, that is in your yard. You're not going to bring that into this house. You're not going to, if you're abusive, you're not going to bring the abuse into this house. And there's going to be a limit. So the consequences of the problem fall over here. Okay. Now, that's basically what boundaries are. And throughout the scriptures, you see two lines of God's character that are always parallel. His love and his care and his righteousness and the limits and all of the different aspects of his law that define how we're supposed to live and responsibility. And those always go together. Grace and truth, righteousness and mercy. And see, when God loves, he also holds people responsible. God never loves without holding people responsible, then he would be codependent, right? And God never holds people responsible without being loving because then he would be a tyrant and a judge and just condemn everybody to hell because we've all screwed up. What he does is he brings both of them. He has forgiveness and he confronts our sin and he wants us to do better. The law was given through Moses, remember that? But grace and truth were realized through Jesus. So what we're talking about here is not nuking the son, <laughs> You know, just giving him the truth. And we're not, and we're talking about not just loving him and letting him get away with anything. We're talking about being a person of grace and truth where the father loves the son. And he says, I love you. And here are the requirements. And that's what you see in healthy relationships. You see love and you see requirements. And when we don't live up to the requirements, we speak the truth in love and set limits and boundaries, require each other to be responsible. Now, what's the Bible's word for when we're not doing that? When we step over in somebody else's yard? Look at this. Isn't this cool? When we start talking about a property line. What does the Bible call it from day one? Trespassing. Trespassing is when I step over the boundary, go over the fence. That's when you're a trespasser. You go over the fence, you break the boundary, and somebody ends up hurt. And so that is the problem of the universe. All right, let me tell you a few other things that boundaries do for us. Boundaries, as I said, define responsibility and control and property line and all of that. And they talk about where me and not me is, where I end and you begin. And then the next thing is it tells me what I'm responsible for and who I'm responsible to. See, this is me. If this is me, I'm responsible for me and I'm responsible to you. So if you're doing something to me, I also have a responsibility to take responsibility for my feelings and say, you know what, that's hurting me. I've got to be proactive, and we'll see these come up later in the laws of boundaries in that session. I got to be proactive, take responsibility for the hurt, okay, stewardship over the hurt, and go to you and tell you about it and work out that conflict. I'm not responsible for your behavior. I'm responsible to you to reconcile the relationship, and that's how this works. See, the father isn't responsible for the studying, but he is responsible to the son to set limits and consequences so 
that the kid can get his act together. That's why when a family has to do an intervention, for example, on a drug addict or an alcoholic or somebody like that, they are being responsible to them by holding the boundaries. Leviticus 19 says this, do not pervert justice. It said, now watch this. It says, do not show partiality to the poor or needy or favoritism to the great and powerful. When do we lose our boundaries? When somebody over here is not being responsible, but the poor little person, you know, they've, they've had it so hard and, you know, it's so hard for them to show up and get up and go to work because they, you know, they're having a bad day. And, and, I, and what do you do? It's always, it's always somebody that, you know, when we are like not getting our act together, certainly we got problems and we feel sorry for people and we don't hold them to the limit, right? But you know what part of getting well is? It's being held to the limit. When I used to work in a lot of psychiatric hospitals and you have somebody check in that's very, very depressed, do we feel for them? Are they in need? Absolutely they're in need. And we love and feel compassion for them. But if they're going to get well, you got to go and make them show up to group. You got to make them do the hard work of therapy. You got to make them talk about stuff. You got to make them learn new skills. So when God says, don't pervert justice, don't be partial to the needy, just because somebody's broken doesn't mean there's not requirements even when we are broken. If you go in and get surgery at the hospital, you're going to wake up the next day, oh boy, are you needy? <laughs> are you in pain? And guess what? Nurse Ratchet walks in and knocks on your door and says, okay, you got to get moving. Ah, it hurts. I know it hurts, but you got to move those muscles. See, even when somebody is broken, there are requirements. If your kid's struggling in school, they got to show up and do the homework. We love and have compassion, yes. But there are always requirements. There are always requirements. That's why the Bible says, if any man doesn't work, don't let him eat. Are we going to help? Absolutely, we're going to help. But there's going to be requirements, okay? There's no free lunch. Even for babies, I mean, think about this. From the day you're born, you got to show up and do something to get the food. What do you got to do? You got to pick up the phone. <laughs> you got to do something. You got to call mom to come in there, you know, and bring the milk, right? And it never ends. Sorry, guys, no free lunch. There's always requirements, and that's what boundaries do. They tell us who's responsible for what, okay? So the other thing that boundaries do is that boundaries keep, let me draw this again. Boundaries keep the good stuff in and the bad stuff out, okay? Think about your house. What do your fences do? Why do you have a gate and a lock? Well, you got a bunch of stuff in your house. It's good stuff. You got a fridge, you got a TV, you got a dog, you, know, you got some people you love, you got some jewelry, whatever. You lock the door at night to keep the good stuff in and the burglars out, right? So the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. So what does that mean? It means that you got to guard your heart with all diligence. That's what Proverbs tells us. So if somebody's going to do something hurtful, what do you do? You say, no, <laughs> no, I don't want that. That's not good. That hurts me. Keep that bad stuff out of here, right? Psalm 101. Go read Psalm 101. David lists a bunch of stuff. Liars and unfaithful people and judgmental people and all this stuff. He goes, get away from me. I don't want it in my house. And then he says something else. He says that... The faithful, the good people, they are the ones that will minister to me. So he's going to let them in so good stuff can come in, but he's going to keep the bad stuff out. And we make choices in relationship to keep abusive people away and let good people in. The Bible is very, very clear about that. Okay, so here's the deal. What are we learning? Boundaries keep the good things in and the bad things out, but boundaries are not walls. See, boundaries are also permeable. So I've got a gate that I can swing open and I can let love in, okay? But if abuse shows up and comes knocking, what do I do? I close it, okay? And throughout the scriptures, go to Matthew 18. If somebody does something hurtful, you go to them and it says you confront it in love and you say, this was hurtful. And it says, if they're wise, they go, gosh, my problem, sorry, won't do that again. And then you go, fine. And it says you've won them over. But what if you say you have hurt me and they don't care and they're not listening? 
Do you say, oh, well, I'm patient and forgiving? No, it says increase the boundary. It says get two or three others and go to them and put a stronger boundary up against abuse. And then if it doesn't listen, if they don't listen to, it says to two or three, get a stronger group. And finally, what it says is wall yourself off from them. Look at Matthew 18, starting in verse 15 up to about 21 or two or so. It says, finally, if they won't listen, then separate, okay? You know what the next verse in the passage is? It says this, and you've heard this verse misused in so many ways, but here's what it says. For whatever you bind, hear that? Put a boundary around. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in the heavens. And whatever you loose will be loosed. So in your life, you got to make sure that there are boundaries binding evil so it cannot destroy. And instead, we, be, we can be a force to transform evil. And that is basically what boundaries do. So keeps the good in and the bad out, defines responsibility, control, all this great stuff. And then what you've got is you got to remember that this came from somewhere. Where did boundaries come from? Well, it comes from God. God, think about this. God is separate from his creation. There are boundaries where he, he begins and ends, and the creation begins and ends. The God is a subject and an object, right? And he is not his creation. We're not pantheists like God is everything, and God and I am God, and you are God, and we are all together, and we sit in a hot tub and you know, strum a guitar. That's not our faith. Our faith, faith is firmly rooted in reality that there's a God that is separate and in relationship to you and me, but he is not us. The New Age philosophy says that we are God and all is one. No, the Christian faith says there are real limits and boundaries of identity, and I am separate from you, and you are separate from me, and we are separate from God. And even within God, there are separate identities and boundaries of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, who are connected in one, but they're also separate. And from there flows everything, okay? So a couple more things about this. Let me give you some examples of boundaries. What is it that shows, you know, because in the, in, the, in the physical world, it's easy to see a fence, right? But if you walked around your relationships and held up a big fence, people think you're weird, so don't do that. But they still have to see your boundaries. So how are they going to see your boundaries? Well, the first boundary that shows what's you and not you is your skin. So if somebody violates our body in some way, that's a boundary violation. And we are pretty much responsible for everything that happens, you know, with our skin on. So if you do something with your body, you're the one in control of that unless you're violated. And wherever we show up, there we are, and we're the ones that drove. So we've got to be responsible, the Bible says, to possess this vessel in honor. So we've got to be responsible for our own bodies. Number two, your words. When somebody steps over here and does something injurious, you should have a word that they run into and you say, no, don't do that, or I don't like that, or that's wrong, or that's hurtful. So how do we know when we stepped over the boundaries? We've got to learn to be assertive, and we've got to learn to speak the truth, what? In love. Okay? Boundaries are not about beating people up. Boundaries are about lovingly saying, oops, sorry, trespass, violation. No, I don't want to do that. So let them see your words. The next one, the truth. You know, we live our lives according to God's truth. He gives us the boundaries of what we should be saying yes to and what we should be saying no to. And when somebody violates that boundary, then that's where we talk about the truth and say, you know what, I really believe um, in certain values like honesty. The Bible says that we need honesty in our relationships and what you just did, you know, it wasn't honest. And so I've got to talk about when these truths that are really important to me are violated, then there's going to be a, you know, we got to have a discussion. So the truth, and when God tells us certain truths, like if you're single and dating and he tells you the truth that you have to take responsibility for how you act in a dating relationship, and that's violated or somebody wants you to violate that in some way, where you can, can say, you know what, I, I live according to these values, and these are important to me. And I like to really, you know, I like to go out with people that aren't taking drugs. <laughs> or I like to go out with people that maybe, like, are going somewhere in life and don't spend, you know, all day on the couch, video games, 
texting mom to bring them a sandwich. That's really not the way that I want to live. So there are truths that you communicate. All right. So then what's another one? Some, sometimes you need the boundary of a geographical distance. I said Matthew 18 said sometimes that you separate from people. The Bible talks about this in a lot of ways. It, it says that, that, that the, the, the prudent people, Proverbs says prudent people see danger and hide themselves. Sometimes you might have to get away from somebody. There are people that have restraining orders ultimately for boundaries or go to a shelter or get away from a toxic situation. Go stay at a friend's house or something. Geographical distance, emotional distance. Sometimes you stay in physical proximity, but there are there's emotional distance excuse me, emotional distancing, and you say, you know what, I love you, I'm with you, I'm, I'm with you, I want to work this out. There are certain parts of my heart that I can't trust you with yet, so I'm going to hold that until the behavior is trustworthy, but I'm in here with you, okay? So sometimes we don't trust everything that somebody says until there's behavior and there's a track record to do that. And then other people are a boundary sometimes. Remember in Matthew 18, where it says you go confront somebody, but then if they don't listen, you bring two or three others. Sometimes you need to have the safety of your support system to deal with a very difficult boundary situation. Okay, so lastly, what falls within my property that I'm responsible for? Remember I said that this is the four, if this is me, I'm responsible for this, and I'm responsible to you, okay? What am I responsible for? Let me give you a list. My feelings, my attitudes, my behaviors, my choices, my values, my limits, my talents, my thoughts, my desires, and my love. All of those aspects of personhood are my responsibility. So in our relationship, let's say something's going on and I'm having feelings like, you know, I'm being hurt or you're bugging me or something. Those are my responsibility. I can't blame you for that and resent you. What I got to do is take responsibility for how I feel and go talk to you about it. If I got attitudes that are ruining my life, then I got to take ownership of that and work with my attitudes. If I got behaviors if I'm making choices, if I'm not setting the right limits, those are all my problem. And you know what? Ultimately, it's kind of the story of the Bible that our life is our problem. Problem's not a bad thing. You know, problems are basically means opportunities that we got stuff to solve. And God has us born on a day. And basically, we got a lot of problems for four score and 10 or however long we live. And what that means is that we have to take ownership of our feelings every day and our attitudes and our behaviors and our values and our limits and our choices and our talents. Remember the parable of the talents? Talk about ownership. God gives this person talents, goes away on a long journey, comes back, holds them responsible for what ownership they took of that talent. That's our life. So basically, you'll see what boundaries, and we're going to talk about, are, are and what they're not. What boundaries are are basically the structure of the way God has designed life, where the boundaries are, where the limits are, where the responsibility is, where the ownership is. Ultimately, a good word for boundaries, stewardship, that we have to be stewards over our life. Guard your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the issues of life. Okay, That's what boundaries are. Boundaries aren't being mean. Boundaries aren't don't mean that we don't love. But what boundaries do is, like the law of God, you know, structures love. That's what we're talking about here. That God has set up his law, his boundaries, his structure of how love works. And if love works, people have different roles and responsibilities in their relationship. And that's what boundaries are talking about. Now, again... Boundaries are not all about just setting limits on what we're going to take responsibility for and what we're not. As we'll see in a later session, boundaries also mean that we take control of ourselves and we extend ourselves to bear one another's burdens, for example. But here's just another example of this. In Galatians 6, where it says, bear one another's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ, what it says right after that 
is for each one shall carry their own load. You know the difference in a burden and a load? A burden is something that's excessively weighty that somebody, there's no way that they, even as responsible as they can be, there's no way they can bear that burden. And love says that we take control of our own lives and we extend ourselves to help somebody. Somebody goes through an illness. Somebody goes through a divorce. Somebody goes through a bankruptcy. Somebody is struggling. Somebody's broken. Somebody's needy. We help them carry that burden. But then right in the same passage, it says, but each person has to carry their own load. And so even somebody that we're helping, there's a requirement for them to do whatever they can do in that situation as well. Like I said, somebody's depressed, they got to go to therapy, they got to talk about it, even though we're helping, okay? There's always boundaries of responsibility, okay? We're going to have a fun time in all these sessions. This is just session one. We've got a lot to do and hope you enjoy the series. Now, I've got some questions for you. Number one is... As you define boundaries in the way that we define it here, then can you see any areas where you have had boundary crossings? Okay, number two, where did you learn that you were responsible for other people? Or where did you learn that it wasn't okay to have limits and say no? And number three, who is going to be, because we're going to see, you're going to need, find, you're going to have to have some people to help you here. Who's going to be your support system to help build your boundaries as you go forward? Hopefully, it's the group you're in now. If you're watching this as an individual, find a buddy, find a good prayer partner, find somebody to support you. Okay, that's it for this time, and I will see you when I come back. John, I think, will be doing session number two. Okay, bye-bye. For more solutions recordings or other personal and spiritual growth products by Dr. Henry Cloud and Dr. John Townsend, visit our website at cloudtownsend.com or call 800-676-HOPE.